The splashing mimics the sound of a large crocodile moving quickly through the water. The call, that of a young one. Both sounds should attract crocodiles to us. Ramson described the croc that attacked him as being over 20 feet long. But they kill by ripping and spinning, tearing at flesh and devouring huge chunks at a time. So it is unlikely that a large croc would only attack the genitals. But could it be a smaller one? Or is something else lurking down there? Just on the edge of this bit of vegetation here, about 20, 30 yards in front of the boat. Dense floating islands of vegetation, perfect crocodile habitat. It's right in the vegetation. They can stay submerged for over an hour. You don't know they're there until they attack. Each time we spot one, it spooks and disappears. They seem very wary. But eventually, Alphonse grabs a baby one. So this one's a salty? Yeah, it's salty one. It's about uh, one year old. One year? So this could belong to the, the big one. This could yeah, be that's a, one, that's of a, the, one of the children. One of the children for the big one. So the squeaking noise, what is, what is the squeaking noise? Call the mother. Is it really? Uh, yeah. So you think maybe a good idea to put back now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can okay. put it back. I can't be certain that crocs are not responsible for the attacks. But Alphonse tells me that they're rarely seen near villages now and both the genital attacks occurred close to the victims' houses. This was once the site of human sacrifice and even cannibalism. Ah, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that! Ah. 